Number 10. Giant Anaconda One of the most feared animals slithering around in the Amazon jungle is the giant anaconda. The giant anaconda is the apex predator of South America. It's a colossal reptile that grows, on average, to be around 28 feet, or 8.5 meters long. Throughout the 10 to 12 year span of their lives, anacondas never actually stop growing. The massive serpent's diet consists of turtles, black caimans, huge fish, deer, jaguars, and even humans if they feel so inclined. They eat around 40 pounds or 18 kilograms a day, or more like night as they are nocturnal hunters. And while an average anaconda is freaky enough as it is, a recent story reported in The Sun will make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. The story claims that workers from a construction site in Brazil discovered an anaconda that measured an incredible length of 33 feet, or 10 meters, and weighed an astonishing 882 pounds, about 400 kilograms. This is obviously insane, but if true, it would be one of the biggest snakes ever discovered on the planet. The anaconda was allegedly found by workers after they did a controlled explosion of a cave while building a new dam. It has led people to wonder just what kind of monstrosities are living deep within the cave systems of the Amazon jungle. Is the giant anaconda the only crazy monster living inside these caves? Or could there be more ferocious unknown beasts lurking in the dark and clammy passages under the forest floor? Number 9. Pink Dolphin Perhaps not the craziest animal in the Amazon, but certainly one of the most exceptional. The Pink River Dolphin lives primarily in the Orinoco River Basin of Bolivia and Colombia. They are spectacular and definitely stand or swim apart from other species of dolphin. Although the majestic Amazon pink dolphins are famous for their pink hue, they were not born this way. They are actually born gray and gradually turn pink as they age. Their final color can be influenced by their behavior, diet, exposure to sunlight, and capillary placement. They can be found anywhere from mostly gray with only a few pink spots to a wonderful flamingo pink. And when the dolphins get excited, they can flush a brighter pink, similar to humans blushing. Another amazing fact about Amazon River Dolphins is that they come with a melon. Every Amazon River Dolphin has a large melon that is kind of like a glob of tissue found in their forehead. The melon is an organ that the dolphins use as a biosonar instrument. The organ is exceptionally mysterious. Scientists aren't completely sure how it works, but they believe that it somehow allows the dolphins to utilize echolocation by focusing sound. It also helps to modulate the vocalization of the dolphin. Some scientists believe the melon is the way that dolphins are able to communicate with one another. The pink dolphins also have the largest brains of freshwater dolphins, and researchers believe that they are also the smartest of the five species. What's your favorite animal from the Amazon? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 8. The Jesus Lizard Have you ever heard of the Jesus Lizard before? This funny-looking reptile is famous for its uncanny ability to run across water. It's actually known as a green basilisk, and it's part of the iguana family. But it earned the name Jesus Lizard for the way it skims the water surface as if by miracle. But it's not actually a miracle. The long toes on the lizard's feet allow it to rip across the surface of any body of water at a speed of roughly 5 feet per second. This is one of the most incredible abilities of any animal on the planet. Not only is it super fast, but it also evolved special traits that let it walk on water. The 2 foot or 0.6 meter Jesus lizard can remain under the water for up to 30 minutes. And they can climb, they can swim, they can run, and they have very strong teeth fused to the inside parts of their jaws. The Jesus lizard is without a doubt the most charismatic reptile living in the Amazon jungle today. Unfortunately, they are also endangered and very easily eaten by large birds. Number 7. Amazon Ghost Dogs A lot of people don't know that there are wild dogs living in the Amazon jungle, but 
It's true. There is a solitary species, often referred to as ghost dogs, that are so elusive, almost nobody has seen them with their eyes. They are typically only captured using remote cameras. The dogs have short ears and look more like weasels than canines, but they actually roam across five countries, all throughout the South American jungles. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, they live primarily in Brazil and Peru, and tragically, most of their habitat is going to be lost by the year 2027 due to deforestation. This species of dog is the least studied across the world, at least according to an ecologist from the University of California. These dogs are different from other wild canines because they don't live in packs. Most scientists believe the creatures live alone and are extremely shy, hiding in swampy forests. They have almost no interaction with humans. And even more interesting is that they're not even part of the same genus as domestic dogs or wolves. They have their own genus. That's how unique these wild dogs are. It's unlikely you'll ever see one. Number 6. The Decoy Spider The decoy spider is one of the freakiest spiders with one of the most unusual abilities known to man. It's a relatively new spider, only recently discovered in the 21st century. But what the decoy spider does as a defense mechanism has shocked and boggled scientists ever since its original discovery. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, these spiders live deep in the Peruvian Amazon jungle, and they use their webs to create fake decoys of themselves. When building a web, the spider will literally craft a doppelganger out of scrap pieces of dead insects, leaves, and other debris. The spider then leaves its sly decoy in the middle of its web to trick any potential predators that might want to eat it for a snack. The spider even sometimes uses the broken legs and abdomens of other spiders to create its masterpiece of mimicry. This is a massively complex survival strategy that shows just how crafty and intelligent even a small and seemingly insignificant life form can be. It turns out, spiders are smarter than we thought. Number 5. The Hotsin Let's take a look at a flying creature residing in the canopies of the Amazon. As the most biologically diverse place on the planet, it should come as no surprise that the Amazon boasts the most impressive and crazy display of birds in the world. One of the strangest is the Hotsin. The Hotsin is a bird about the size of a chicken but it doesn't resemble a chicken at all. It has a blue face, an orange mohawk crest, and some other characteristics that make it unlike any other avian creature around. First, the Hudson is kind of like a flying cow. It is the only bird in the world that uses a foregut compartment rather than a stomach to digest food. Kind of like how a cow uses a special sack inside of its gut to digest its food. The evolution of this bird has, quite frankly, made many scientists scratch their heads in disbelief. And one other thing. The Hudson is sometimes known as the stink bird. This is because the bacteria in its foregut that helps to break down its food also causes vapor to be exhaled by the bird. And the vapor smells horrifying. Basically, it burps up foul vapor. The bird smells so terrible that scientists have nicknamed it the Stink Bird. Hudson like to build their nest on branches that hang over the water, and they lay about two to three eggs at a time. If a predator approaches the nest, the chicks will drop into the water below and hide in the banks till the beast of prey moves on. They are surprisingly good swimmers. Number 4. Yellow-Tailed Woolly Monkey the yellow-tailed woolly monkey is by far one of the silliest monkeys found swinging through the Amazon jungle. But what makes these monkeys so fascinating is their climbing abilities. They look like they're flying through the forest rather than swinging from branch to branch. They typically live in the middle area of the trees and can jump around 50 feet or 15 meters through the air. They primarily live in Peru, and they have large bodies with thick coats of fur, hence why they're called woolly monkeys. They spend most of their days resting and eating, with 2% of their time spent grooming and playing with their friends. These monkeys are absolutely fantastic creatures. Unlike most monkeys, they don't engage in a lot of aggressive behavior. 
and sometimes adult males will fight, but other than that, they are exceptionally peaceful. The monkeys are also quite vocal. They have been known to emit sharp howls when a threat is nearby, particularly when they sense humans in the area. If you ever find yourself walking through the forests of Peru and hear what sounds like dogs barking in the trees, you're probably hearing a group of yellow-tailed woolly monkeys screaming at you to go away. Number 3. The Patu Bird Today, we're looking at the craziest animals from the Amazon, and there's no creature better to start off the list than the Patu Bird. There are several different types of Patu Bird, all of which are equally slightly kooky. They're one of the strangest birds you will ever come across in the Amazon rainforest. If you do, that is. Patu birds are masters of disguise, as they are colored very similarly to the trees scattered around the forest. Its brownish feathers make it blend in perfectly with any tree it decides to land on, making it look more like a stubby branch than an exotic bird. You are more likely to see one of these feathered creatures on nights when the moon is full and lighting up the jungle rather than a normal dark night in the dense bush. If you don't see one, I'm sure you'll hear one. These birds have some of the most distinct and unusual calls of any bird in the entire Amazon jungle. They almost sound like ghosts screeching or wailing in the distance. Some people have described the call of the Patu bird as an anguished whistle that chases men through the forest. According to the local legends of the Amazon, the call of the Patu bird is actually the mournful lament of an ancient spirit, crying its love for a distant spirit who lives on the moon. It's a weird story, but that's the truth behind the Patu bird. Number 2. Spectacled Bear When people think about bears, they typically think about the bears that live in North America, such as the black bear or the grizzly bear. But there's actually a species of bear that roams across the Amazon jungle. It's known as the Spectacled Bear, and it is an incredibly fascinating beast. According to the Rainforest Alliance, there are even Amazonian legends that say that these Spectacled Bears have mystical powers. But of course, these powers have never been scientifically recorded. The Spectacled Bear has a strange circle of cream-colored fur around its eyes, and that makes it appear as though it's wearing glasses. The bear has specialized claws that it uses for climbing trees, and it can live for about 25 years in the wild. They live all throughout Latin America, but prefer the densely forested areas. And like most bears, they primarily eat fruits and other natural foods. They spend most of their days up in the trees, collecting fruit, and sometimes even build their own tree houses out of broken branches so that they can reach their favorite treats on the higher branches. These are really some of the most amazing bears in the entire world, and unfortunately, they are at risk of extinction because of habitat loss. Number 1. Bulldog Bats Last but not least is a remarkable species of bat. People are pretty divided on their feelings about bats. This is especially true nowadays when it feels like bats are spreading their yucky diseases all across the human population. But Putting aside disease, the bulldog bat from the Amazon rainforest is a very special animal. It's one of the only bats in the world that has evolved specifically to become a fisherman. The greater bulldog bat will fly low over the water and pluck fish out of ponds and rivers with its little claws. But not only does this crazy bat like to catch fish, it will also eat frogs and other crustaceans. It uses echolocation to detect ripples on the surface of the water created by fish and other aquatic creatures moving around. The bat then uses its incredible speed to swoop down and catch itself some dinner. How amazing are these animals? What do you think about the secret Amazonian dogs? Abandoned Ship on a Rock here in one of the strangest locations for an abandoned ship imaginable 
is a strange abandoned ship sitting on a pile of rocks with a forest growing out of its hull. While it may be a little less dramatic than a pirate ship stuck on a small island, it's still pretty incredible and it's 100% real. The ship was apparently built in 1917, back during World War I. It carried petroleum products for the company's standard oil, and like other ships at the time, it was eventually used as a cannery up in Alaska. But then in 1966, the ship was scuttled. It now sits completely overgrown on a pile of rocks near Anacortes in Washington State. This ship was actually listed on the National Register of Historic Places back in 1990. You can see the ship from the road as you drive past. However, why exactly the ship is where it is today has proved to be a bit of a mystery. It seems that rather than properly dismantling the boat, it was simply left to rot until it became a historic place all on its own. This is totally against the proper guides for decommissioning a boat, but it seems that whoever was operating it didn't seem to care a lot. Why not scrap it and sell the scrap metal at least? Some things will remain a mystery. Ship on the Highway If you happen to find yourself in the Canadian province of Ontario, you might be lucky enough to spot a gigantic abandoned ship on the highway going from Toronto to Niagara Falls. The ship isn't actually on the highway, it's sitting in the shallow water beside the road. But it's still a pretty odd thing to see, especially if you weren't expecting it. The ship is actually known as the Big Weasel, and it's a replica of the sailing vessel used by the famous explorer Jacques Cartier from the 1500s. The original ship never survived, and neither did the first replica from the 1967 Expo in Montreal. The version you now see, abandoned next to the highway in Ontario, is actually the second replica made. It was crafted by a businessman with hopes that it would become a floating eatery or casino, but the business failed and the ship was abandoned. In 2003, a mysterious arson destroyed most of the ship. Maybe the owner trying to get some insurance money, and what you see today is what happens when you mix history and bad ideas. It's unclear if the owner will ever take the ship away or if the government of Ontario will just let it slowly sink into the water. Have you ever seen an abandoned ship yourself? Where was it? Did you have to go diving or was it left above the water? Did you explore it or leave it alone? Tell me about your experience exploring abandoned ships by leaving a comment down below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already. There are lots of amazing videos just like this one coming out every day. Blackbeard Abandoned His Boat Believe it or not, the infamous pirate Blackbeard may not have been as clever as he's depicted in the movies. Indeed, he was one of the most feared pirates in the Americas, robbing and pillaging where he felt like, but his reign of terror didn't last very long. It's been common knowledge for many years that Blackbeard ran his ship aground in North Carolina back in 1718, but new evidence suggests he may have abandoned his ship on purpose. I'm of course talking about the Queen Anne's Revenge, the flagship vessel of Blackbeard. It was the crown jewel of his pirate fleet. According to historical records, the ship was stranded in 1718 after Blackbeard collected a substantial ransom for lifting his blockade of the port at Charlestown. The ship ended up being abandoned when it struck a sandbar, and it then sank and is still sunken to this very day. For such a fearsome pirate, abandoning his precious craft must have been a big deal. What happened, and why? Up until now, historians figured Blackbeard simply misjudged the depth of the sandbar, causing the ship to get stuck, but it turns out that might not be the case. A recent analysis of the ship's hull revealed that the ship was in awful condition when it ran aground. In fact, it was likely already beyond repair. It was probably leaking water and could not be patched with simple tar and a few planks of lumber. Rather than take it into a pirate ship service center, Blackbeard likely abandoned the ship and took off without it. It was the pirate equivalent of abandoning your worthless car on the side of the highway. It makes a lot of sense, too. The same way a criminal might abandon their getaway car right after they peel away from the scene of a crime in order to disguise their tracks, Blackbeard must have felt pretty smart about escaping from his iconic and recognizable pirate ship to continue pillaging freely. Bermuda Ghost Ship Ships are abandoned all the time. Just recently, an abandoned cargo ship washed up on the coast of Ireland seemingly from nowhere. According to the report from the BBC, the vessel drifted thousands of miles over more than a year from somewhere south of Bermuda all the way to the shores of Ireland. In September of 2018, the United States Coast Guard had rescued the crew members of the boat, which had been crafted in 1976. The vessel had encountered problems while sailing from Greece to Haiti, and a power outage caused the boat to drift at sea for 20 days before the Coast Guard became aware of it. 
The Coast Guard then rescued the crew as a hurricane approached, and afterwards the ship was just kind of left to its own devices. It was spotted a few times since 2018, randomly bobbing through the Atlantic Ocean, and now it's washed up on shore for the curious public to take photos of. However, whether the boat will stay on the shore or if the tide will wash it back out to continue its mysterious and ghostly journey across the seven seas is yet to be determined. What does not make any sense though is why no one has captured the ship and begun disassembling it for scrap metal. They could even refurbish it and it would be worth a lot of money. The whole situation is awfully strange, to be honest. Abandoned Renaissance Town with Pirate Ship Everyone wants to hear about pirate ships, ancient relics, and the possibility of buried treasure, right? This place has it all. A creaking pirate ship is sitting abandoned in Sherwood Forest, Virginia, but not just a pirate ship. There's a crumbling stone castle, a rotting Tudor mansion, and all kinds of eerie sights from the Renaissance era. In fact, it's an entire theme park based on the Renaissance that opened to the public in the 1990s and then closed three years later and was subsequently abandoned. While the pirate ship obviously wasn't used for any piracy, it's still a pretty shocking thing to see sitting on the bank of a river in the middle of a Virginia forest. Everything in the park is crumbling into dust, and the pirate ship is essentially a death trap. It seems like the whole place might be haunted, or it could be filled with unfriendly wildlife. The whole situation is totally bizarre. Why hasn't the park been refurbished or turned into something new? It's a perfect place for daredevils and thrill seekers to go for an adventure. While definitely a mysterious place to explore, I don't recommend trying to board this particular vessel. Rotting Cruise Ships Pirate ships and cargo ships are not the only types of ships to be abandoned. Try saying that three times fast. In 2020, many cruise ships ended up being abandoned because of the coronavirus pandemic. As you can imagine, maintaining a cruise ship is ridiculously expensive, especially when there are no customers on it. The result has been shipyards permanently closed and cruise ships being forgotten and dismantled all over the globe. For example, the cruise company Carnival lost at least $2.9 billion according to the New York Times, and they have abandoned 18 of their ships already. The big mystery here is what the future of cruise ships will look like, whether anyone will ever board a cruise ship again and what will happen to the thousands of unused ships all around the world. It might be a great time to pick yourself up a cheap cruise ship all for yourself. I wonder what it would cost to create your own floating party palace, even if you just anchor it in port and charge people to come aboard for dinner and drinks. You could also play a really amazing game of hide and seek on one of these abandoned hulks. We also might see a lot of these vessels washed up on random beaches around the world. The Lady Lovabond Ghost Ship Perhaps the most mysterious boat ever to sail the seven seas is the Lady Lovabond. This ship sailed back in the days when sailors believed it was horrendously bad luck for a woman to be on a board of a ship when it was out at sea. And in this case, it really was. Back in 1748, the Lady Lovabond left port from England en route to Portugal. The captain brought with him his new wife. So far as the legend goes, one of the men aboard the ship was jealous of the captain and his wife, and so he took control of the ship and steered it directly into an area known as the Goodwin Sands, essentially sacrificing the entire vessel and killing everyone on it. But here's where the story gets interesting. Exactly 50 years to the day after the ship was destroyed, the captain of the ship Edenbridge recorded in his log that he nearly collided with a schooner that looked identical to the Lady Lovabond. Another 50 years and the same thing happened again on February 13th. This recurrence went on until 1948, leading people to believe that every 50 years the mysterious ghost ship appears in the same place. People even went out to the area of Goodwin Sands in 1998 on February 13th to try and catch a glimpse of it, but the ship never showed. Now we have to wait until 2048. Fire Island Shipwreck The Bessie White was a Canadian schooner that ran aground on Fire Island. This happened either in 1919 or 1922, as the historical records are a bit confusing. But the boat definitely ran aground, filled with water, and ended up a complete loss. The crew survived, but the cargo was lost, and the ship was eventually salvaged. Most of the wreck was taken apart, and the few pieces remaining washed out to sea. Now, keep in mind, this was in the early 1900s. Then in 2012, the hull of a mysterious ship was found beached on Fire Island. The hull was rotted and old, and it definitely did not come from any modern vessel. Experts believe it's the mysterious remains of the Bessie White. Though the real mystery is whether the hull had been on the beach the whole time, or if it floated around the world and came back to land in the exact same spot. Sugar Boat Shipwreck 
For 40 years, there has been an overturned hulk of a ship sitting in the middle of the River Clyde in Scotland. It's known as the Sugar Boat Shipwreck and it was destroyed during a storm back in 1974. While the storm was not overly mysterious, the fact that the boat has remained sideways and abandoned in the middle of the river is nothing short of a miracle. There have been plans over the years to blow it out of the water, but it's never happened. And nobody has bothered trying to salvage it because there have been disputes over who even owns the boat, so it's probably going to sit in the water sideways as a strange and mysterious eyesore for the next 40 years. I wonder what kinds of animals have made this rotting piece of metal into their underwater home. The MV Joyita the MV Joyita is the most mysterious abandoned ship ever. It was a merchant vessel that went missing in October of 1955. The ship was in pretty rough condition when it set out, but that does not account for what happened. You see, after the ship went missing, it was discovered five weeks later adrift with not a single person on board. The crew appeared to have abandoned the vessel and then vanished into thin air. The boat was in no danger of sinking, so it's highly unlikely that the crew had abandoned the ship. And in any case, there was no sign that they had packed up and gone. But to make things even more mysterious, there were four tons of cargo missing, and the radio was turned to the International Marine Radio Telephone Distress Channel. To this day, nobody knows what happened to the crew or why they abandoned the MV Joyita. Bali's Abandoned Plane Some abandoned places are a little more obscure than others. Take the abandoned plane in Bali, for example. Nobody knows about this place, and yet it is very cool. There is an abandoned Boeing 737 sitting in the southern part of Bali, and nobody knows how it got there. It's about five minutes from the popular Pandawa Beach, and yet it's something of a secret that mostly only locals know about. The plane appears to have landed properly with no sign of a crash or some kind of catastrophic failure. It obviously missed the airport and decided to touch down near the jungle instead, but it's really crazy that nobody noticed a Boeing 737 touching down. And as for the people who left it there, nobody knows where they went. Someone would have had to land the plane, get out, and then find their way to civilization. According to some locals, the plane was supposed to be converted into a restaurant for tourists, but this is just a rumor. Nobody knows if the owner of the plane ran out of money, if they just ran out of gas and had no choice but to land, or exactly what happened. The aircraft is now surrounded by a few shipping containers and a particularly shabby hut. For those in the know, it's a great day trip to get away from the beach. It's easy enough to explore and just 5 miles 8 kilometers north is yet another abandoned 737 sitting next to a Dunkin' Donuts. It seems that Bali is basically a graveyard for random airplanes that nobody knows about. Discovery Island one of the strangest abandoned places that nobody knows about is Discovery Island. What's really crazy is that this abandoned island is located in the center of Disney World in Florida. Thousands of visitors hang out at Disney World every day and have no idea that there is an abandoned island with a horrifying past just beyond their favorite rides. But just what is going on with this island? It's located in Bay Lake, and it's a huge landmass that can only be reached by boat. Before Disney purchased the land, it had been used as a hunting retreat. Before it was Discovery Island, it opened in 1974 as Treasure Island. There was a shipwreck, treasures, and other pirate-themed nonsense. But in 1976, the island was renamed Disney's Discovery Island. Disney turned it into a tropical paradise with interesting plants and beautiful birds. But this turned out to be a huge disaster. The park was abandoned and forgotten in 1998 after 25 years of operation, and it happened after a pretty grim scandal. It turned out that some of the employees at Discovery Island were up to no good. There were reports of widespread animal abuse, including employees smashing the eggs of birds, hitting birds with sticks, and even shooting at them with guns. It was an absolutely horrifying place, and according to a 1990 report from the Orlando Sentinel, Walt Disney World had to pay a massive fine to settle 16 animal cruelty charges held against them and five of their employees. Darby Island and the Haunted Castle the Bahamas is supposed to be a beautiful and relaxing place where you can take your family on a quiet vacation. But nobody knows there is a private island in the Bahamas purported to be haunted. The island also has a secret Nazi castle abandoned in the middle of its lush forest. The castle is known as Darby Castle, and it was apparently built as a working plantation back in 1938. During World War II, the plantation was the largest employer in the southern Bahamas. The workers produced palm oil, fruit, and they even worked with goats. And even though the castle is now in ruins, the legend of its horror persist. Some claim that the Englishman who lived in the castle was a Nazi sympathizer. Some even say the ghosts of the Englishman and his mistress have never wanted to leave the island and are still there today. The island has 554 acres of land completely abandoned and not lived in. When exactly the island was left unattended is still something of a mystery. 
Even more interesting is that the Unknown Island has some pretty wealthy neighbors. It's been reported that Nicolas Cage, Johnny Depp, and even David Copperfield each own their own private island residences near Darby Island and its abandoned Nazi castle. Have you ever discovered an unknown or unique abandoned place while exploring? Tell me about your discovery, post about how you found it, and what was there in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you have not already for more awesome and fun videos just like this one. Ordos. There are some pretty fabulous places in China. All things considered, it is home to some pretty incredible monuments, a rich and interesting history, and the most revolutionary architecture on the planet. It's also home to many ghost cities, including this one. Ordos is being called the world's largest ghost town. According to Business Insider, the local government threw a ton of money at an urban development project in the early 2000s after a coal mining boom. They had hoped to create a massive epicenter for culture, economy, and politics. This place was named Ordos Newtown. It would be able to hold one million people, and it was created with the most advanced sports venues, incredible architectural projects, and massive residential towers. Unfortunately, nobody settled in the city. In 2016, there were only 100,000 people living there. That's just one-tenth of its space being filled. A visit to this strange city feels like arriving at a post-apocalyptic space station. The architecture is amazing and highly advanced, the city is huge, and yet there is nobody living there. There are empty streets, huge residential towers without a single person living in them, and luxury homes still new without a single resident. Even more incredible is the Art and City Museum that does not have any visitors. There's a huge stadium with no games being played, there are also abandoned and villas and empty schools. It's the most low-key ghost town in the world, and nobody knows about it. SS City of Adelaide Australia is home to the coolest animals in the world. Most of the country is also a barren wasteland. Off the shores of Australia, there is one of the strangest sights you will ever see, and because of its total isolation, nobody even knows it's there. I'm talking about the SS City of Adelaide, which launched back in 1863 from Glasgow en route to Sydney. It operated for 30 years as a passenger ship before being transformed into a vessel for sailing. But then in 1912, the ship caught on fire. It burned for several days before anyone managed to extinguish the flames. It was then purchased by a rich resident of Australia who wanted to use it for his own personal business. While the ship was being towed to its destination, it ran aground in Cockle Bay. It was then abandoned. All these years later, the SS city of Adelaide is still sitting in the bay in ruins and overgrown with trees. There is a literal forest growing out of this half-sunken boat. It's been completely reclaimed by nature, and there are no plans to scrap it anytime soon. In fact, the ship is located in a remote region of an Australian marine park, which means it has special protection. There are no commercial fishermen allowed in the area because they could disturb the SS city of Adelaide and its peaceful ecosystem. Shade Swamp Sanctuary the Shade Swamp Sanctuary is one of the freakiest unknown places in Connecticut. It's a zoo from the era of the Great Depression, located just off the highway, completely abandoned, broken down into an ugly ruin, and pretty much nobody knows it's there. You can find the zoo off Route 6 in Connecticut, and people drive by it every day without knowing its story or what even it is. But here's the scoop. The zoo was once part of a massive preserve known as Shade Swamp Sanctuary. It began as a wildlife rehabilitation operation in the 1930s where injured animals were rehabilitated and then released into the wild. These were birds, bears, and all kinds of other crazy animals. There was also a breeding program for raccoons and rabbits because people hunted them so much during the Great Depression because they had no food to eat. But then came the issue. People began to hear about the zoo and so they would bring in the exotic pets that they didn't want anymore such as monkeys and giraffes. It became too much for the zoo to handle. They didn't have enough funding, and by the 1960s it was completely abandoned and left to rot. It's unclear what happened to all the animals, but it probably was not anything good. What's really interesting is that the whole area is now protected and on the National Register of Historic Places, but only because of a wooden shelter constructed in the sanctuary back in 1934 by members of the Civilian Conservation Corps. It's because of this artifact that Shade Swamp Sanctuary cannot be destroyed. The National Capitol Columns the Capitol Columns are one of the lesser-known historical sites in Washington, D.C. These sandstone columns supported the East Portico of the United States Capitol way back in the early 1800s, but in 1958 they were replaced with new marble columns. The United States government wasn't sure what to do with the originals, so they put them in storage until 1984. Then they decided to put them on display at the National Arboretum, but it turned out that nobody cared about the old columns. Even though they had been used as part of extremely important inaugurations between 1828 and 1958, such as Andrew Jackson and Abraham Lincoln, they are currently abandoned in an open field and nobody goes to visit them. Nobody even knows they're there. The Rutland Prison Camp 
The Rutland Prison Camp is another unknown abandoned place that deserves way more attention. It's buried deep in the forest of western Massachusetts, and some people even say the ruins of the old Rutland Prison Camp are haunted. The camp was apparently used in the 1800s and the early 1900s as a prison that housed minor offenders and those who had committed nonviolent crimes. In those days, that meant people who were charged with public intoxication or avoiding taxation. The inmates were forced to do farm work and they lived in minimum security lodgings. But as the years went by, the camp grew and grew, more and more prisoners were sent to it, and it was abandoned out of nowhere in 1934 because of a massive complication with the water supply. It seemed that the prison camp could not sustain a large population, and it was abruptly forgotten. This was actually a huge issue in the 1900s, as jails, hospitals, and asylums all began to see massive waves of overcrowding. The ruins can still be seen in the forest if you know where to look, and it's a pretty ghostly sight. If not for the layers of bright and annoying graffiti sprayed all over the stone, it would definitely be a lot creepier. The Rodney Ghost Town Speaking of creepy, the Rodney ghost town in Mississippi is certainly the most disturbing place in recent memory. It's also extremely difficult to find and almost nobody knows it's there. The only way to find Rodney is to locate the old country store on Highway 61. From the store, you have to turn down a road that does not even look like a road. You will pass by the Cane Ridge Cemetery, so you know you're getting into seriously creepy territory. Then the road stops after about 12 miles, 20 kilometers. From there, you will find yourself in the middle of the city of Rodney. It had once been a bustling town on the Mississippi River, but today nobody lives there. It is a horrifying sight to behold, and not somewhere you want to spend the night. The town also has a pretty disturbing history. Rodney was incorporated in 1828, according to Mississippi Folklife, and had about 20 buildings stretching away from the river. The town grew to hold about 200 residents, a few stores, and even the first opera house in the state of Mississippi. But in 1843, the town was struck by an epidemic of yellow fever. Then it happened again in 1847. So many people died, the town became depopulated. Residents were forced to flee because of fear of disease, which many of them suspected came from New Orleans. But despite all the death and pestilence, Rodney still became an extremely busy port on the Mississippi River after the 1850s. There was another population boom, which resulted in at least 4,000 residents by 1860. The town was even more popular than Jackson. But as with a lot of things in the South, the Civil War spelled disaster. Many people moved out of the region, many of those who had gotten rich off the backs of slaves were forced to change their way of life, and by 1930, Rodney was no longer an official town. The river flooded, the structures diminished, and the town gradually died. But it still survived quite a while. It was not until 2011 that every last resident was gone and Rodney turned into an official ghost town. Flying Saucer Homes a lot of people don't know that there are flying saucer homes from the 1960s spread across the globe. These are known as the Futuro Houses, and they are in essence the last remaining physical manifestations of the optimism felt in the 1960s. They look exactly like flying saucers and were prefabricated vacation homes built to easily adapt to just about any terrain. You could put them on the side of a mountain or on a beach. But the remaining flying saucer homes from the 60s are now spread across the globe. Almost all of them are abandoned, and they can be seen from the beaches of Australia to the snowy tundra of Russia. It's unclear how these weird spaceship houses got distributed so far across the planet, but it's believed that there are at least a dozen of them still decaying throughout the world. One of them is abandoned in Royce City, Texas. Another can be found near Frisco in North Carolina. And if you dig deep enough, you could travel most of the world searching for the rest of these abandoned UFOs. What do you think? Are you up for it? Would you visit any of these mysterious locations? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and be sure to come back soon for more amazing content right here on Taltanic.